Well, friends, today we come to a crucial passage in the Bible for understanding the Christian life, for understanding who as Christians we already are and how we can grow into who God has created us to be. Now, the Bible says we're to grow up in our salvation. Now, I wonder if you've ever seen a young boy, like maybe, maybe 12 or 13 years, years old, a normal kind of size kid, skinny looking year seven kind of boy. Um, he's got his high voice still. He's, he's got his wispy facial fluff still. He has, he's not shaving yet. Um, he's maybe, I don't know, five foot four, five foot five. But he's got these huge feet. Have you ever seen a kid like that? Maybe they're, I don't know, they're size 13 or 14 feet. They're massive. You ever seen someone like that? Well, when you see someone like that, what do, you, what do people usually say about that kid? <laughs> Some different answers are flying around. They'll say, often, he'll grow into those feet. He'll grow into them. And in most cases, he will. Because you see, the potential is already there. He's already got the genes um, it's already in his genetic code. You know, it's just got to come out as he grows into his enormous feet. Now, if you're a Christian, if you're a Christian, you've already been born again. You've already been given a new heart. You've already been given God's spirit. And so you've already got all the potential to be godly to be holy. It's already there. It's just a matter of growing up, of growing up into who you already are. But how? How? Well, through living by the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, who God has given us to make us holy. Now, as we look at the passage that Peter read for us this morning from Galatians 5, we're going to look at the war within, okay? The war within every Christian. We're going to zoom in firstly on the battle, asking, are you engaged in combat? And if so, whose side are you fighting for? And then we'll zoom in secondly on the outcome, asking, how do you win the battle? And so firstly, the war within, now, soon after I became a Christian, I became a Christian age 25, and soon after I became a Christian, things started to change, okay, for me, but, but not really in the way that I'd expected. You see, instead of temptations going away and life becoming a lot easier, it was just the opposite, because I started noticing all these sins in my life, things that I'd just naturally done before without much thought or concern, uh, were now becoming obvious and were really troubling me. So much so that I started battling against them. It was, like, it was kind of like I'd been dropped into a war zone. And thankfully, thankfully, later I discovered that that was actually a good sign. Because it's exactly what the Christian life's meant to be like. A war within. An ongoing battle in this world. The battle Paul highlights in today's passage. And so it'd be great if you could open up your Bibles. I'd love you to open up your Bibles or your Bible apps to Galatians 5. I'm not going to be putting anything up on the screen today. Um, so if you could turn to your Bibles, that would be excellent. Okay, Galatians 5. Look with me at verse 17. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. So, if you've come into Christianity thinking that in this world all your problems will go away and life will be a bed of roses, guess what? That's not the picture Paul's painting here. Because when Paul, you know, when you become a Christian, Paul says, you know, you, you, you're, you're immediately put into a battle. Your flesh, your sinful nature on the one side versus the Holy Spirit on the other. Now, when Paul talks about this conflict, he's not, he's not talking about the body versus the soul. He's talking about the attitudes, the motivations, the inclinations of the whole person, the heart, the will, the mind, which, 
when led by the flesh or sinful nature, lives to please self, you know, for self-satisfaction, for self-glory. But when led by the Spirit, lives to please God through godliness and holiness for God's glory. The flesh versus the Spirit, they're in conflict with each other. And so if you're a Christian, you see, the war within's begun. The question is, you know, how close are you to the battle zone? Are you engaged in combat? Because if you're a Christian and if you're, you know, if you're drawing near to God, if you're seeking to be led by the Spirit, the world, the flesh and the devil, they're not going to lay down their arms and surrender in this world. You've sided against them. And so they're going to come after you. They're going to try to attack you. See, friends, if you've become a Christian and if you've given your allegiance to Jesus, if you're now seeking to grow in holiness by the power of God's Spirit, then there's going to be a war within. And you're going to be engaged in some serious combat. In fact, if there's no war, then maybe it's because maybe it's you're lacking in your allegiance to Jesus. And so are you engaged in combat? And if so, whose side are you fighting for? You know, moment by moment, decision by decision. Are you siding with the flesh, your sinful nature, or with the Holy Spirit? Well, to self-diagnose, to help us self-diagnose, Paul goes on to describe the acts of the flesh, the sinful nature, versus the fruit of the Spirit. Have a look at some acts of the flesh from verse 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. Now, it's not an exhaustive list and I'm not going to go through each of them, but as you can see here, there's some basic categories to most of the ones that are listed here. For example, one category is sexual in nature, that if you're yielding to the flesh it'll come out sexually, in sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery. Sexual immorality in the Greek being porneia, which covers virtually any kind of sexual sin. Another category is spiritual in nature, that if you're yielding to your flesh, it'll come out in false spirituality, in witchcraft or idolatry. Idolatry meaning to worship anything other than God. And you know what? We all worship someone or something. Everyone worships someone or something, don't we? You know, we commit our time, our talents, our treasures, our hearts, our passion, our resources to someone or something. But if it's not to God, it's idolatry. As we worship maybe a relationship or a job or a hobby or a sport or an education or a substance or an experience or a house or a boat. You know, it can be almost anything because the flesh is an idle factory. The flesh, it comes out sexually. It comes out spiritually. It also comes out socially because sin doesn't just separate us from God, it also separates us from each other in all kinds of relational breakdowns, you know, in marriages, in families, in friendships, in communities, even in churches. Paul indicates this in such words as hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy. And there's lots of other ways that the flesh can come out too. Paul simply says the works of the sinful nature, the flesh, they're obvious. And he issues a strong warning, saying, verse 21, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. That those who live like this, you know, those who practice these things, those who regularly or habitually give in to the desires of the flesh, you know, giving in to the desires of the flesh, they won't inherit 
the kingdom of the God. Sorry, they won't inherit the kingdom of God. Because you see, regularly or habitually indulging the desires of the flesh really is evidence that maybe there's no real war within. You know, the war that rages within Christians, that is. Maybe, maybe, and, or, or maybe that you just don't yet have the Spirit. Or that, if you've got the Spirit, that you're not engaged in combat. You're not engaging in combat. Or maybe that you're siding with the flesh over the Spirit. Well, Paul then moves on to describe the fruit of the Spirit. From verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now, without going through each of them, notice that they're not so much acts as character traits, attributes of God that we can reflect as we live by the Spirit, as we grow into the godly person that we've been born again to be. Now, it can take time, of course. You know, if you look at a fruit tree, if you plant a fruit tree and you, you look at a fruit tree, you know, the fruit, their fruit, it begins small, right? But it grows. Well, as Christians, we want the fruit of the Spirit to grow in us. We don't want to be sexually immoral. We don't want to be spiritually corrupt. We don't want to be socially divisive. We want to be loving and joyful, at peace and patient, kind and good, faithful, gentle and self-controlled. That's what we should want as Christians. So turning then to our second point, the outcome of the battle. How can you win? You know, how, can, how can you turn from the works of the flesh you know, to the fruit of the Spirit? Well, you know what? Your answer to this pretty much sums up much of your theology. Because firstly, the wrong way. Okay, here's the wrong way. See, what often tends to happen... People, um, people look at the life that they are living and then they look at the kind of life that God calls them to live and they decide, I've got to try really hard to get from point A to point B. I've got to do things. I've got to do this and I've got to do that and I've got to do the other things. And what they end up doing is either officially or unofficially making rules thinking, you know, if I could only live by the rules, then I'll look like that person. Now, what's that called? What's that called, anyone? Religiosity. You know, it's human religion. It's law-making. And it always fails. Look with me at verse 18, though. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under law. See, Christians are no longer under the burden of the law. And yet, because of sinful pride, people's natural tendency is often to want to make ourselves acceptable by what we do. And so even as Christians, you see, we can still live day in, day out, day out as though we're under the law, trying to prove ourselves and earn our own way. You know, even when trying to exhibit godly character traits like the fruit of the Spirit, you know, the way people often try to get there is through the flesh. Trying hard, but always failing and feeling guilty. It's a bit like me with diet and exercise. 
You know, let me give that illustration. You know, occasionally I'll declare to my family, and I haven't done this for a while, I'm long overdue in doing this, I should say, but occasionally I'll declare to my family, look, I'm not going to eat junk food anymore. I've turned the corner. <laughs> I haven't done that for a while. I need to do it. But, but here's the problem, you see. I have never actually done a real U-turn in that area. It's like I'm stuck in this perpetual roundabout, you know, a roundabout. And sure, I'll, 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 I'll very occasionally I'll pass by the exercise and healthy eating section of the roundabout, you know, for just a little tidy while. But then sooner or later, and I'll seem to slow down on this section, I'll pass by the KFC and Macca section again. I'm stuck in this roundabout. Now, some of us in our Christian lives live in a roundabout when it comes to trying to be holy, trying to be holy. You know, we make rules and, and we go okay for a little while and then we fail and we feel guilty and we start all over again. You see, that's the wrong way. It's the wrong way to turn from the works of the flesh to the fruit of the Spirit. So what's the right way you know, to win the battle? Because the enemy, you see, the enemy, the flesh, is not going to surrender in this world. It's got to be defeated. But as we've seen, you can't kill the flesh by trying to kill its effects. You've got to attack the cause. The cause has to be attacked because it's a cause and effect thing. Only when the flesh dies will the works of the flesh die with it. And so the flesh, the sinful nature, has to die. The question is then, how do you kill the flesh, the sinful nature? Well, you can't. You can't. But the great news is if you're a Christian, the enemy's already as good as dead. Look at verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The decisive battle's already been fought and won. The Spirit's already captured the capital and broken the enemy's back. Sure, there'll still be some pockets of resistance in this world that need to be fought back each day, but verse 16 promises us victory if we live by the Spirit. Not that, not that there won't still be an ongoing war within in, in this world, but that verse 16, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Did you hear that? Walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Because the desires of the flesh, although they're powerful, far too powerful for us to conquer, they're no match for the Spirit of God. And so walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Now what do you need to do in all of this? Well, from verse 24 again, those who? Those who? Belong to Christ Jesus. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So simply, belong to Jesus. Belong to Jesus. Which is what the gospel tells you. It's the opposite of what the flesh will tell you. You know, because the flesh will tell you only those who do things to try to crucify the flesh with its passions and desires will belong to God. You know, only those who are really moral or religious or good can be accepted and belong to God. That's what the flesh will tell you. But what the gospel says is only those who belong to Jesus crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. Only those who belong to Jesus. Not because of anything they've done, but only because of, only because of what? Jesus has done. And so, friends, this is it, you see. This is our answer. Here's what we need to know. We need to know 
the gospel. The good news about Jesus. Because if you really want more of God's spirit and his transforming power, you really need to believe the gospel more and more deeply. The gospel, the gospel that assures us that Jesus, by his death on the cross, he was crucified for us, for our sins. He was crucified in our place for our sinful flesh. And he rose in victory. And so, verse 24, those who belong to Christ Jesus, those who belong to Christ Jesus, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That if we trust in Jesus, we're united to Jesus, we belong to Jesus, then by the power of the Holy Spirit, our flesh with its passions and desires is crucified. And you see, by daily basking in this glorious gospel, by grasping more and more deeply this gracious love of God, and by submitting, by submitting more and more willingly to Jesus and his lordship, he'll give you more and more of his spirit who will enable you to say no to the flesh and empower you to be godly more and more, making you more and more like Jesus as you trust and follow him. So friends, it's really all about belonging to Jesus and so being transformed by his spirit. So ask yourself, in your Christian life, Ask yourself, in your Christian life, do you believe the gospel more and more and then love God more and more and then reflect godly attributes more and more? The fruit of God's spirit, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Let me finish with verse 25. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. See, if we're united to Christ and born again through his Spirit, if we're alive by the Spirit, then let's walk or live in ways that show that we're being led by the Spirit and not by the flesh. Let's keep in step with the Spirit of God, step by step by step. Let's fight that war within, being led by and by living by, by being led by and living by the Holy Spirit. And then we'll grow up into who we already are, those who belong to Christ Jesus. Amen.